We'd like to give you, we're running short as I look at the, the uh, time and the president's calendar. We'd like to ask you, Ralph, if you have any uh, comments. This is probably an unprecedented opportunity for you to tell the president. care that he shows to the students. He takes the time to go out and meet them face to face. They know who he is. He's a real person. in that way. But the overall thing again was in here, really the nostalgia running for the team. And that is... it should be whatever your area code is and your number okay next which is very important this is very important in case of an emergency what would happen and what should you fill in now fill in there not just your uh, relatives or anything like that you want to put someone who is going to be home at a time in case of an emergency okay mark Larry we're down there where it says, in case of an emergency, go ahead and put in someone's number, a neighbor or a friend that is normally home when you are going to get, when you are at either work, if you are working for someone, they want to be get able to get a hold of someone, okay? So again, where it says phone number, to put down, please, the area code and your full number. Okay, we'll head on down to school. Good morning, Mr. President. Good morning. It's a pleasure to have you here on our well, campus here at Pioneer High School. I'm interrupting no, you're not at all interrupting. You'd like to join us? Yes. Well, All righty. Here and we're ready. Today we are working on uh, some material that has to do with application forms. And we're doing this to have a personal data sheet so when the students go looking for work, they have this information with them so that it's readily available when they're seeking a job or uh, applying for a school or going to college or wherever they may be headed in the future. So we're, that's what we're uh, working on today. And that's a pretty practical lesson. Oh, I guess I better use this, haven't I? <laughs> well, uh, I just said inside I was in there with the forum that's going on for a moment ago and told them I had to come out here because I was scheduled to be here and I said that I thought maybe you asked me to a remedial English class because you'd heard my speeches. <laughs> uh, but uh, no, i just like to, and I won't say too much uh, here and, uh, before we get into maybe some dialogue that I would hope we could have. I know that uh, summer time and a summer class is not it's probably not the happiest experience, and you think that you could find a lot of things you'd rather do than that. But I think one day you'll find that this was an awfully important uh, thing for you. You know, you may have all kinds of ambitions, and this is fine that you're uh, 
learning what you're learning here and something that would be helpful in work or in a job. And no matter what you want to do or how badly you want to do it, there are too many people will go single-mindedly at this particular craft or profession that they want and they won't bother learning the ability to communicate with others. And you stop to think of how many great things that have occurred and uh, great uh, masters of science and engineering who've given us some of the benefits that we enjoy today if they hadn't had the ability to sell someone on that idea and convince them this was a good thing, we might not have some of those advantages. And all of that is based on what your class is all about here today. The mastery of a language, the ability to communicate with others, and if you've got something really to sell, and it could be no more than selling yourself across a desk uh, in order to get a, a job that you want very badly. But I'm not gonna go on talking uh, that way I said a dialogue. I think maybe you might have some questions and uh, uh, that you'd like to ask. And I know I don't have too much time here to interrupt your class, but you fire away. I know there's a okay. microphone out there to be. Does, does anyone have a question for the president? OK. Pass, get the microphone first, please. Talk directly in there. Um, Mr. President, um, how, do you, how do you feel about coming to Pioneer High School? Well, I'm very proud and I, I have to tell you very excited and you weren't inside so I can tell you that uh, we just presented a flag and a plaque to Pioneer High School as our first selection, something we're going to be doing throughout the country, of a school that has been, that has been decided on a, a group of experts that we've chosen throughout the country to make these decisions, this flag announces uh, that this school has received the first award for excellence in education. And uh, I met with your principal and the superintendent of schools in there, and, and uh, I, I must say it, it was very inspiring, and I'm going to go away from here a lot happier about your generation and education in America as a result of what this school has accomplished. I, I hope you enjoyed the trip over here. Enjoyed it very much. <laughs> Someone else have another question? Yes. yes. Charlie. Um, Charlie, go ahead. What do you think about? Speak directly uh, into it. Uh, what do you think about um, the? They're cutting down uh, money. They're giving less money to our uh, dis the district of Whittier. What do you think of that? Because you know we have a six-period day, but now we're going to a five-day five-period day because they're cutting down on funds and we can't go on a six-day six-day period. And you know they're cutting off some of our electives. What do you think of that? Well, I, w I wasn't aware of that. Didn't know about that. But I know that many of the things that the Commission on Excellence in Education is recommending are things that are not going to be affected by uh, budgets or money. As you know, the bulk of budgeting for education comes from local and state governments. And now the state government of California, I'm happy to say, 51% of the budget is for education. Um, the federal government, uh, from the beginning when it first began uh, contributing to education, uh, has only, only puts up about 8% of the money for education, and this is for a number of things, uh, programs that would not be affected by what you're talking about. And uh, if more money is needed, we also have to recognize at times, uh, for example, California was in a, a pretty bad situation just recently, and they're trying to get out of the hole, so everyone may have to uh, be set back a little bit. But I don't believe that that is going to really uh, cut back on the quality of education that you're getting in this school. I also just uh, uh, heard Jaime Escalati teacher in mathematics here and um, his plans for the improvement in that and the increase in classes in in that and uh, he showed me that when I was governor of California he showed me a copy of his teacher's certificate I signed that certificate when he became a teacher when I was governor but uh, 
There's no question about the importance of it. In California, the tradition has it that the state splits 50-50 with local government and the cost of education. So 51% makes them a little ahead. When I became governor here, the state was only putting up about a third, even though the tradition had it that they were supposed to, to do more. And we did achieve that 50% level. But um, there are things that, uh, that need implementing, and that is more required courses, uh, fewer SNAP courses that you can choose for yourself, stiffer requirements for graduating, uh, all of those things I think your school is, uh, is engaged in and is doing right now. Okay, anyone else? Are there any other questions? Okay. I'm going to give, pass the microphone over to Robert. Pass it down to Robert. There you go. Mr. President, how do you like living in the White House? How do we like living in the White House? Yeah. Well, <laughs> I've described it several ways in several different ways. Uh, I've told them once when, when I was a kid and my father worked in a store, we lived in the, above the store. Uh, it's a little bit that way in the White House. You go to work in an elevator <laughs> and uh, go home from work in an elevator. No, it's very beautiful and you're impressed by the, the history of the building and uh, can't complain about the lack of comfort. It is a most comfortable place uh, to live. At the same time, there is a little feeling of being a bird in a gilded cage. Uh, you're rather restricted and limited in what you can do. Once you get upstairs there, that's about <laughs> where you are until it's time to go to work again. And that's why I found why so many presidents, including myself now, on weekends go to Camp David, where you can get back to a normal house and open a front door and walk out in the yard if you want to. Uh, take a hike and do things of that kind. Uh, you are restricted there in the heart of the city, but the, the history of it never ceases to impress you. The knowledge of all the people that have lived there, uh, the, it used to be that the White House was also all the offices of the president's staff and cabinet and so forth. And it was in the time of Teddy Roosevelt. Uh, Mr. When President, uh, I think our time is pretty oh. short now, and uh, I see a signal coming over here. All right. And it's uh, been a pleasure to have you visit with us wow. here at Well, I've enjoyed campus. it. Okay, so we uh, want to thank you very right. much. I left Teddy Roosevelt way up in the air, and I was just going to tell <laughs> that he had, they had seven children, and his wife one day told him that he was going to have to get all those employees of his out of the White House or she couldn't raise seven kids. <laughs> and that's when they built the Oval Office and all the places where we now have the offices <laughs> that we go to in an elevator. Well, okay. listen, I'm, I've taken too much of your time, and let me just once again say, really, take seriously what is happening here. This is a course that can be as important as anything in the world to all of you and what your futures, what you want your futures to be. Yeah. I think that's yeah. about it. Huh? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. We want to thank you very much. It's been an honor to have you here. <laughs>